you are going to learn a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to make a bar bending schedule for staircases. A staircase is simply a structure member that provides easy access between lower levels and higher levels of a building. A staircase has four major parts, that is the riser, the treed or going, the waist or ramp, and the landing. Making a bar bending schedule for the staircase is the simplest among all other structure members and we do that in three easy steps. The first step is to understand structure drawings for staircases. For example, this is H1605150. H16 simply means the bar thickness, meaning this is 16 mm bar thickness. Bar Mark 5 shows us where our steel bars start and end from. For example, this is Bar Mark 5, which starts from here, comes like this and stops where you see this 5 here. Then this 150 means the spacing from one steel bar to another center to center. And since we are using millimeters as the standard unit in this structured drawing, this simply means this will be 150 millimeters. Step 2 is understanding where steel bars start and end from. For example, this steel bar with code 3 starts from here and goes up this extreme end. This bar with code 7 starts from here up to this beam. To get the shape of the steel bar, you simply have to follow a number and know where it starts from and then where it ends from. Step 3 is understanding the arrangement and how steel bars are fixed in a staircase. Here's what I mean. Let's look at an example of a half turn staircase. The concept also applies to other types of staircases. This is its cross section or side view, and this is its top view. We use spacers or concrete covers of 50 mm everywhere below the ground, and then 25 mm everywhere above the ground. This is the riser, this is the going, this is the waist, and this is the landing. A typical half turn staircase usually has bottom bars which act as a foundation for the staircase, top distribution bars, bottom bars here and then with a gap here. This part usually has a gap depending on the structured drawing details with no top bars here. This is the landing. And then at this extreme end, there is always a beam which sits on a masonry wall. This beam here at the end is always supported by two columns. Load is transferred from the staircase to the beam, then from the beam to the columns, then from the columns to the foundation. Physically on ground, these are the bottom bars which act as a foundation to support the staircase. These are top distribution bars. This is the landing. This is the beam. This is the masonry wall and these are the two columns that transfer load from the beam to the foundation. When preparing a bar bending schedule for the staircase, we begin with this bar shape here at the bottom. When we extract this bottom bar out of the main drawing, this is 1.2 meters here at the bottom, this is 500 millimeters, and then the task is now to find out this last side here. When finding out the length for steel bars along the ramp, we just look at these steps here. For example, before the landing, we have 1, 2, 3, up to 10 steps or goings, with each going at 280 mm and then the rise at 160 mm. When we extract one step out of the main drawing, this is 160 mm here and this is 280 mm to make a right angled triangle. If we are to use Pythagoras theorem, we find out that the third side is 322.5 mm. That is the distance for the hypotenuse along the ramp. So if one hypotenuse is 322.5 mm, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 steps here, meaning we get 322.5 multiplied by 4 to get 1 meter 290 mm, which is approximately equal to 1.3 meters. And that is what we write here as 1.3 meters, this side as 500 millimeters, and this bottom side as 1.1 meters. And that's how we calculate for the rest too. In case you get a little bit confused when calculating for the cutting length in the staircase, just look at the scale down here below. For example, this is 1 in 10 on an A1 paper. It simply means that for 1 millimeter on an A1 paper, that is equal to 10 millimeters on the ground. Therefore, where things confuse you, simply get a ruler, 
make your measurement on the specified paper size and then multiply that by the scale. For example, if you measure along this landing as 135.5 mm on an A1 paper and the scale is 1 in 10, it means that to get the actual measurement on the ground for the steel bar, I get 135.5 multiplied by 10 to get 1 meter 355 millimeters and that is what we put in the table here. Similarly, if along the length for this steel bar with code 3, when you measure along this line and get 246 millimeters, simply multiply this figure by 10 since it's on an A1 paper and with a scale of 1 to 10. So the answer here will be 246 multiplied by 10 to get 2 meter 460 millimeters and that is what we write here in the table. You have to keep in mind that most times not every measurement is given in the structured drawing and that's why we find them on our own. I calculated for all these steel bar shapes using the hypotenuse and also Pythagoras theorem. You can use one of the two methods above. The one to find out the hypotenuse of a single stair and then add a series of them for different stairs to come up with this straight length. The second method is using the scale. Measure the length using a ruler on paper, then multiply what you get by the figure on the scale, let's say 1 in 25, meaning you multiply what you get by 25, or 1 to 10, meaning you multiply the figure you get on the ruler by 10. It's not just on every paper. The scale always goes hand in hand with a specific paper size, say A1, A4, among others. When you have the table filled with all these values, getting the exact number of steel bars to be purchased from the hardware store or factory is quite simple and easy to get. Let's use an example of this one. This is 4 meters, 30 millimeters, meaning we need 11 pieces of steel bars, each with a cutting length of 4 meters, 30 millimeters. The total length here is 44 meters, 330 millimeters. Each steel bar is 12 meters long. Therefore, when you get the total length and divide by the length of one steel bar, you get 3.69, which is equivalent to four steel bars. Therefore, to cater for this steel bar shape, we need four steel bars of H16. In summary, when making a bar bending schedule for staircases, the first step is to understand structural drawings properly. The second step is to understand where steel bars start and end from. And the third step is to understand the arrangement of steel bars and how they are fixed. Also take note of these three precautions. Be sure to leave 25mm concrete cover for bottom sides and at the top of the staircase. The spacing from one steel bar to another is either 100mm to 150mm center to center from one steel bar to another. Top bars in the ramp will be the bottom bars in the landing and also bottom bars in the ramp will be the top bars in the next landing. That's the end of this video about how to make a bar bending schedule for staircases. I hope you get something from it. In case you want to watch the entire playlist, click on this video on the left or watch this next video on the right on how to make a bar bending schedule for the slab. Thank you so much for watching.